is to be known for loving Christ, to build his church, to love his bride, and make his name known far and wide. For this cause I live, for this cause I die.
The only thing I want in life is to be known for loving Christ, to build His church, to love His bride, and make His name known far and wide. For this cause I live, for this cause.
preach to pastor in a mighty way, mm -hmm. and allow the Holy Spirit of God to be upon him and direct his path. And Lord, you just encourage us with your word in every way. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 All right, hymn number 85. Hymn number 85. Just over in the glory land. Amen. Hymn number 85. Just over in the glory land.
what you're going to encounter. Uh, we don't say that with a fearful heart, but, uh, but we a prudent heart. We want to be wise as serpents and harmless as doves. So we covet your prayers as well. Let's pray and ask the Lord to bless this offering. Father, we thank you for this time to give. Thank you for every soul that's in this room tonight, Lord. Thank you for their life, uh, for the purpose you've given their life, the value you've placed on their life. And Lord, I pray tonight if there's somebody here who uh, has never known uh, that salvation by grace through faith is available for them tonight, uh, Lord, would you reveal that to them. And we thank you, Lord, for what you're going to accomplish. And thank you for this time to give. And we ask your blessing upon the offering now in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Christmas 
banquet, which is December 12th at 3 o'clock. Uh, there's no cost involved, but I need to know if you're coming, so we can make sure we get enough uh, food for everybody. Uh, so make sure you get signed up uh, at the back table there. Also, there's more, uh, I put some more bags at the, uh, at the back counter. If you would be willing to grab a bag on your way out, um, for those who are interested, we need some more labels put on tracks. And so there's, uh, there's bags, there's labels, there's tracks, and that's just a small dent of what's actually sitting in my office right now. But we'll figure we'll get those out there so you can take those uh, and get those all labeled. When you bring them back, uh, bring them back to, to give them to Brother Chris. You kind of make sure that we uh, keep everything filled up in, that, um, in the track rack in the back so he knows where it all goes. So uh, you can bring them back and give it to him. Uh, he'll, take, he'll make sure you take, uh, get that taken care of. I'll keep putting bags out there every week. Uh, and we'll, we'll get them done. We have 10,000 we got to get through. So, uh, so we got work to do for the winter, all right? So uh, some, some may not be interested in doing that. That's all right. Uh, others, make sure you grab a bag on your way out uh, and help out with that, okay? Uh, does anybody have any praises today? Anybody want to thank the Lord, praise the Lord for anything uh, that uh, maybe God has showed them or done uh, in, in their life? You know, recently uh, in my devotions, I'm going through Deuteronomy right now, and he got, uh, I think it was Deuteronomy 9 or Deuteronomy 8, somewhere in that range. God kept reminding his people, he says, remember, when I, when I give you the country, um, remember, <coughs> it's not because of you. It's because of me. Nice. And uh, he says, it's because of their evil that I'm using you to judge them. And he kind of several things. You remember, when, when you go over here, remember, it's not because you guys. Because what happens when God starts to bless? We, we sometimes start to think it's us. And uh, he says, beware, lest, lest you forget me. And, uh, you know, nobody ever wants to be forgotten. And God doesn't want to be forgotten by his children. Right. So the Lord's been working on me, showing me that, and just saying, listen, remind me, hey, this is all about the Lord. Everything we're doing is about the Lord. We've got to remember that. So um, anybody else? Any, got any blessings or anything? Brother Wayne? Yeah, I want to pray for the Lord. Uh, the new meal by God. Uh, I'm going to Run, um, rust it out, and I pray to the Lord that He would provide a vehicle, and He has, and it's to Mary and sister, and himself, and He provided a vehicle, and He provided um, the care and help me, and some money that I had to get the vehicle fixed, and it was a starter, and it was a radiator, and there's a few more other things. Yeah. I did a little work today. I mean, the lady called me up. I was short on some money, so God made a, fuck, made a way for me to have the extra money to be able to get the title done and be able to uh, get plates. And I'll be up and I'll be driving. Amen. <laughs> so the prayer request is for the rest of us because Wayne's going to be driving. Thank you know, I'm just going to get it. And then thanks and give praise to the Lord Jesus Christ because, you know, I, when I prayed to the Lord, I said, Lord, hey, I'm in the air on this type of situation. I don't know what I'm going to do. Amen. But God always good. seems to make a way. Amen. And he's helped me out so much. Yeah. And uh, it's a blessing. I mean, praise uh, the Lord. Amen. I'm all praying and glory for that. Amen. And That's I good. thank Aaron and I thank, uh, um, Aaron's sister. Claire. Claire. Yeah. And that's great. Amen. Praise the Lord. That's good. <laughs> All right, anybody else? Any other? Shelly. Um, at work today, uh, my boss, I had been going to the room same time she was coming in, and she was like, oh yeah, we were talking today about our Christmas party. And we were all thinking that we wanted to have a um, fortune teller come in <laughs> and, um, you know, read tarot cards sure. and all this kind of stuff. You know, everybody thinks it's fun and all this kind of stuff, blah, blah, blah. She says, but, she said, I talked to the CEO today, and he says, you know, Shelly's very, uh, a very <coughs> devout Christian, and she goes to church all the time, all the blocks. I've had several conversations with him, yeah. and she would be offended by this, and she goes, so we've changed it, and we're not going to have a fortune teller or tarot cards come here to the office to Praise do this or whatever. Amen. And she was like... You know, I, I'm not um, religious or anything. She's like, I guess I just never realized that that was in the Bible, that it was wow. like that or whatever. And so I thought it was kind of neat. I hope, I 
I'm hoping now, because I get along with everybody, yeah. like I'm hoping now that maybe this will open some doors to like show people. Yeah. So right away I text Diana Starr and I'm like, Diana, I need your help really quick. Because I was like, we're, we're still working. Amen. I'm yeah. like, just text me real quick some like, yeah. um, you know, places in the Bible in case somebody comes to me like right away, you know, and says, hey, can you show yeah. me where that is? So hopefully Amen. it'll open some doors to like show some people. Amen. So. And that's good. That's what we preach often about. You know, that separate, um, separate living in that way provokes those type of situations. So you definitely have a mark on you, in a good way, in the Lord's eyes. So that will absolutely open opportunities for you to share, share at least those scriptures which right. may lead other things. So praise the Lord. What is the scripture for that one? Go ahead, Shelly. <laughs> it's got to be in no, Deuteronomy. It's, a, it's in Leviticus. It's in Deuteronomy. There's yeah. several in the Old Testament. I think, I think she directed me towards uh, 1 Timothy yeah. um, to read it through there. But she definitely said, like, witchcraft, sorcerers, like, um, yeah. all of that kind of stuff. She said, just do a study on just that. She yeah. says, and you will come up with so much stuff um, just by doing, like, a little study on that. So... Um, I have a little app on my on my phone, a Bible app, and so yeah. I, I did when I was there when I had a break real quick, I just yeah. put in witchcraft and it was like holy cow, all this stuff that it brings you up in the Bible, oh, yeah. different sources on the witchcraft and so yeah. yeah. So did you say it's first Timothy? Well, um, yeah, I'm trying to think of where she's yeah. talking about it first Timothy. The reason I asked is because I have a friend that said, um, Oh, it's harmless, it's not like it's in the Bible. And I didn't know how to argue the point because they didn't get the very information. So. What you want to look up is the word necromancer. Necromancer is a fortune teller. Okay. Um, there's uh, dreamers of dreams. There's there's a whole list in there. Um, again, I, I, I'm sure it's in, I can't think of the New Testament right now. Probably Timothy, as you were saying. Um, I know it talks about it in Leviticus. Um, it talks about it in Exodus. Um, probably Deuteronomy as well. Uh, let's see. Uh, Deuteronomy 13, I believe, uh, has it as well. Um, to see. Well, we'll have to look it up. But yeah, yeah it's all over the Bible yeah. as there's far as numerous. yeah, numerous places. And, and there were people in the Book of Acts. You know, she was a fortune teller, mm -hmm. uh, and you know, she had a spirit of divination in her. It's another word you look for: spirit of divination. Uh, and of course, she got saved and got delivered of that. That's why Paul and them got arrested because they took away the means of gain for they were using this woman to make a bunch of money. And she got saved and, and, and uh, got away from that. You know, it, it, I saw somebody recently, even even within the uh, church on their phone, they had things with the horoscopes on it. Horoscopes are the devil. I hope you understand that. That's, that's the same same stuff. I remember as a kid, I didn't know anything better, and I used to sell those little scrolls. Uh, and uh, like the, the, the line, you know, at the grocery store, and you get them. You know, you read those things up and up, you start to believe that nonsense. Mm -hmm. And uh, but there's a there's a seducing spirit that's behind mm -hmm. it that the Bible talks about. And so uh, I know I've preached that before. Maybe we'll do some more uh, in the future. But uh, what a what a great testimony! Praise yeah. the Lord. Thanks for sharing that. All right, anybody else? Uh, any praises? Yeah, wait. Yeah, I want to praise the Lord for me. She makes so many. Uh, wonderful cookie, banana. Mm -hmm. I suck in that one. Amen to that one. And, uh, <laughs> and crosses and, and Nancy really, I mean, she really makes some good cookies. Praise the Lord. Those of you are right back to the cookies. Yeah, crosses and uh, good cookies. I got you. Thank Nancy for that. And yeah. last cookie. <laughs> Amen. Very good. Praise the Lord. Amen. That's good. And then I want to praise the Lord for uh, Brian Starr. Calls me up and Diane dropped me off a big new sandwich today. We're all going to be hungry about that waste and praise the Lord. <laughs> We're all going to be hungry. That because that sandwich, I, I, I told Brian, I said, I don't know if I'll beat it, but you can leave it right at my door. <laughs> so when I was there, when I came by taking my cousin Mark yeah. uh, for therapy, the ones that, where he had his laser shop or his feet yeah. shot off, there was a bag there with a nice big sandwich. Well, praise the Lord. The Lord is faithful. Shelly, you had some? Oh, yeah, just real quick. Just thanking all the veterans here tonight. Oh, amen. Yeah. How many veterans do we have here tonight? We've got a few. Thank praise you. the Lord. Thank, Thank you. Thank you for your service. Yeah, amen. Amen. Nancy. I'm thankful for Ruby coming. Amen. It's yeah. good to have Ruby here tonight. So glad you came. Praise the Lord. Anybody else got any praises? Anybody at all? Yeah. 
that we can gather here tonight and not have the fear of anybody banging down the doors and telling us we can't. That's right. Not yet. <laughs> but you know what? We're not going to, God has not given us a spirit of fear. I, I understand the governor spoke this afternoon. I haven't seen it yet, but uh, um, we'll, we'll see what it says. I think there's a law in Ohio that the governor can't do anything with churches. Amen. So it got passed this year, so it's, it's uh, and, and he signed it. Um, and he signed the fact that he couldn't change elections anymore like he did last time either. So, um, but, uh, so we'll just trust the Lord and keep moving forward and, and just trust him in this, you know, virus that is 90, now, now I'd say 98% of the people are, are recovering from. I, I doubt that it went up a percent, but um, we'll leave that to the so-called scientists. Faith doesn't require science uh, to believe it. So, and I don't know if you know the science, although the little black signs that you see all over Lakewood that says science is real, um, they don't mean the science that is really real. Okay. Right. They're, they're talking about, uh, you know, that their science says that uh, you can't determine the gender of a baby until the baby gets old enough to determine it for itself. That's their science. So if that's the science you believe in, that's not the science that God has given for man to figure him out and to learn about him. And so, uh, so anyway, we'll praise the Lord. Let's, uh, let's, let's pray and get into our lesson tonight. Father, we do thank you for this opportunity to be here. And we thank you for your word, Lord. We know your word can never be bound. Lord, man can bind other men, but they can never bind the word of God. And there's people in our world today that are governed by the, by the devil who hate your word, Lord. Right. And, uh, and Lord, those who believe in it become a target. But Lord, you've not given us a spirit of fear, but a power of love and a sound mind. Mm -hmm. And we have a great lineage of people who have gone to their death defending and standing for this word, Lord, and may we have the courage to do the same if called upon in our lives, Lord. We thank you for every soul that's in this room tonight. Uh, Lord, we thank you for what you're going to accomplish through your word. Thank you for all the praises that were uh, shared tonight, and we thank you for the ones who maybe didn't share a praise, but they have them, Lord. We thank you for your many blessings in our lives and answered prayers. We do pray for our country tonight, Lord. We're a mess, and uh, Lord, we're thankful that there is some a movement towards uh, proper and right things. But Lord, without your word, without you, there's there's no hope. And Lord, we need a revival of your word in this land. And uh, Lord, we are the light of the world. We are the salt of the earth. It's our job to do that. So help us to do that in, in, in the area of the world you've given for us to minister here in Lakewood and the surrounding areas, Lord. We pray that you'll bless our service tonight. Again, if there's somebody here who's not saved, uh, may they, through the Spirit of God, learn of their need of salvation tonight. We thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, we're going to uh, embark on a little bit of a study here. Um, and I want to, if you look on your handout, it says Hebrews 4.12. We'll be there in a little bit. I want you to go to Genesis chapter mm -hmm. number 3. You know, obviously, unless you have been totally ignorant of things going on, you realize that um, our, our country is a mess tonight. It's been for a long time. And you can peg it down to the exact uh, uh, thing uh, that is necessary to fix it. There is one answer to fix America's problems. Amen. And, and, and it's this Word of God. Amen. It is the Word of God. And, and again, I know we've spoken about it before, that I believe you can actually trace the demise of America shortly after the Civil War when America said, we're going to stop using the King James Bible as our main Bible. And uh, they came out with one revision after another, after another. And we have watched the corruption of America's churches take place. And the devil has sat there and laughed and, and had a heyday with, with uh, people who claim to be Christians and those churches that claim to be Christian. Hmm. I know people get uncomfortable when you start making judgmental comments like that. But listen, the, the book is a book of judgment. Yeah. And we're, 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 he that is spiritual, listen, he that is spiritual judgeth all things, the Bible says. Amen. So the purpose of judgment is for the sake of illumination, not condemnation. Okay, we don't, we don't expose, expose these things for the sake of condemning others. We do it for the sake of illuminating truth so that you can take the measure of truth and measure each and every person against it. And by the way, it's most important if you do yourself to it first. Amen. Right? What good is judging other people 
if you haven't used it in your own life. Um, for, for you don't even have the Holy Spirit of God if you're not saved. So you can't discern properly. It's impossible to discern the Word of God. But what we're going to find out is the answer to man's problems has always been the same thing. God's Word. Amen. That's why it's no strange coincidence that that is what the main target of Satan's uh, um, fiery darts are all about. is about the Word of God. At the very onset of uh, uh, shortly a few days after creation, we don't know the exact time frame, but we know it wasn't real long uh, after a man was created and woman was, was uh, uh, you know, brought forth out of man that the devil came and started messing with God's words. Right. You know, God had given a very clear commandment to Adam. Um, if you look at uh, Exodus chapter 2, in verse number 16, it says, And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it, for in the day that thou eatest thereof thou shalt surely die. So a pretty clear commandment. Alright? God looks and says, uh, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely. That's an important word. You'll notice the devil always removes that word. Because right. he doesn't want you to know salvation is free. Amen. You don't have to work for it. Jesus already did all the work for you. But freely eat. But of the tree of the knowledge of the good and evil, thou shalt not eat it. For in the, day, uh, in the day that thou eatest of thou shalt surely die. So it's a clear command. Very, very distinct. So we come to chapter 3. And it says, Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said. So the very first act that we have recorded of Satan in the book of Genesis is dealing with God's words. Sorry. Now he goes on to say, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. Now, for a while, I used to preach that, yeah, that's exactly what God said. That's exactly what God said in, in um, message, but not in words. That's right. Mm -hmm. And so I've had to correct that and say, you know, no, this isn't what God said. You can't just say, well, that's kind of what God said. Because that negates the importance of the Word of God. Because here's what Satan does. He, he actually changes the structure of the sentence to make it say something that it didn't say. Now that maybe sounds deeper than what it is. He, he changed the Word of God. That's not what God said. Yet the first thing he attacked was God's words. Mm -hmm. And he says, ye, ye shall, ye hath God said, ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. No, God said, of every tree of the garden, garden thou mayest freely eat. He didn't say that you're not, uh, did he not say this? No, no, this is what he said, you may freely eat, but of the tree of God. So, so what does he do? He messes with the word of God. And what happens? Well, man falls, doesn't he? <laughs> because he messed up with the word of God. Now it goes on, the woman says unto the serpent, we may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree, which is in the midst of the garden, God hath said, ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. Did God say that? No. He didn't say that either. No, God, sure. So, well, yeah, but he never said anything about the fruit. He didn't say anything about the fruit. He didn't say anything about uh, not touching it. We don't see anything in the command with that. What we see here is an alteration of God's word. We, we, Eve was a defeated foe going into this match because she didn't stand upon the words of God. She may have got the concept or the message of it, but they weren't the words. And, and Jesus shows us later that it's the words that defeats Satan. Mm -hmm. Thus it is written, and he quotes the scripture. 
So what happens here? The serpent then, who's the devil, said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. Now he directly challenges the Word of God. He directly contradicts it. He says, I'm telling you, you won't die. Even though God said you would die. Because the devil's a liar. Amen. And so, he, what, is, what am I saying? He's messing with the Word of God. Then he goes further and assumes, this, you got to catch this, when somebody messes with the Word of God, they assume a position as God judging God about His Word. Watch this. Look what Satan said. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. What Satan says here is basically, hey, God knows. God's hiding some things from you guys. He doesn't want you to know that you can experience all kinds of things out there because he doesn't want you to experience. He knows the day that you are, you'll be a challenge to him. You'll, you'll be just like him. You see what messing with the Word of God does? It assumes a position where we're now judging for God. Now, no. how do you know what God knows? How does Satan know what God knows? He's not God, but he assumed a position of authority actually higher than God. So right from the onset of man, Satan comes along and starts messing with the Word of God. We have a book filled with that failure to maintain the Word of God and stay obedient to it. The entire book is filled with the rest of that, and the remedy for it had to be Jesus Christ, who was the Word of God in the flesh. Mm -hmm. So why, why are we, before we get in our hand out, I want to go through some things tonight, important Bible things that you and I need to know about our Bible, questions we need to ask. Well, why is this still important? Why is this still a necessity? Because Satan hasn't changed at all. Right. I want you to go over to 2 Peter with me. I'm just trying to lay some groundwork. I realize we're probably not going to get through the, the handout tonight. I'm not even going to try to, 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 to ram it through. We'll get through what we can. Um, 2 Peter, chapter number 1. Of course, Peter is talking about the divine nature here, what it means to be like Christ. If you want to know what it means to be like Christ, what the finished product looked like, and what you're supposed to do to get there, you read 2 Peter, chapter 1. Amen. And you add to your faith virtue, and add to virtue knowledge, and to knowledge temperance, and to temperance patience, and patience godliness, and godliness brotherly kindness, and brotherly kindness, charity. That's called the divine nature of Christ. And you and I have been given the ability to replicate, basically Jesus replicating himself in us by adding those things to our lives. So he goes through this and he says, reminds him of it. Then he comes to verse 15. He says, uh, Moreover, I will endeavor that you may be able after my departure or my decease, because he tells him he's about ready to put off this tabernacle, Verse 14, he's going to die. He's going to be crucified. He says, Moreover, I will endeavor that you may be able, after my decease, to have these things always in remembrance. You say, well, what's the problem, Peter? You told him the story. You told him what happened. So isn't that good enough? I mean, isn't oral tradition good enough? Isn't passing down one story to the next generation, isn't that good enough? <laughs> I remember one time, I think it was last Thanksgiving, we started joking around at our table play a little game of telephone. Uh, and you met, you get maybe three people around before that thing was butchered. And then the, then the kids start intentionally messing it up, right? Um, but before you were trying to play the game, it's hard to get through a couple people and have the words exactly what they're supposed to be. So he says, I'm going to endeavor to make sure that after I'm gone, after I'm dead and gone, I want these words to live on. I want you to know this is what God wants you to know. For we have not come, uh, followed cunningly devised fables. He's saying, this stuff wasn't made up that we were following. We're not following some, some cartoon character. We're not following some, some fable, some story. He says, when we made known unto you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but were eyewitnesses of his majesty. Amen. So we weren't making this up. What we told you is true. What we told you is right. He said, for he received from God the Father honor and glory. When there came such a voice to him, from the excellent glory. This is my beloved Son, whom I am well pleased. 
And this voice which came from heaven, we heard when we were with him in the holy mount. What's he talking about? Remember the Mount of Transfiguration? Remember when Peter, James, and John went up on that mountain and Jesus transformed into his glory, his full glory, and Moses and Elijah were there and uh, they were up on that mountain and you remember Peter says, oh, this is great, Jesus. We ought to build three tabernacles, one for you, one for Moses, one for Elijah. And the Bible says a cloud came over, God's glory came over and said, no, no, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. You know, people are longing to have those experiences. People are longing to say, if I could just hear God's voice, I'll believe in Him. No, you won't. If you won't believe His word, you won't believe His voice. That's right. Your experience isn't proof that the Bible's true. Amen. People have had many experiences that are not proof that the Bible's true. Uh, uh, some of them do prove that the Bible's true and that they're liars. Yeah. So, so he says here, we heard it. We heard His voice. You would think that would be validation enough, wouldn't you? He said, we heard it, and what we told you was true. And we told you exactly as we witnessed it, what we heard, and we told it. And I'm trying to, Peter says, I'm trying to maintain it so that you guys will remember after I'm gone exactly what was said. Mm -hmm. So he says, we have also a more sure word of prophecy. You mean there's something more reliable yep. than hearing the voice of God on the mountain with Jesus? Yeah. Yep. Do you ever remember something wrong? I'm learning as I get older. I remember lots of things wrong. Right. My wife was about to amen there for the first time. She was about to say, amen, preacher. Yeah, you, you remember things wrong all the time. And I do. Our, our minds were frail. As we get older, we forget more and more. Uh, maybe that's just me. I don't know. But, but he says here, uh, there's something more reliable than your experiences. Something more reliable than you asking God and God of you. I remember one guy said, um, I, I prayed and I asked God if he would show, if I was driving down the road and he would send a sunbeam down, I would know that his will is going to get accomplished. Somebody actually told me this years ago. And I said, well, what happened? He said, well, I didn't know if he did it. <laughs> right? Isn't that the, that's the problem with experiencing it? So well, here's what Peter said. I'm going to put it in a way so you guys know exactly how it was. And you don't need to be on the Mount of Transfiguration to know what happened. Yeah. You don't need to experience what we experience to know it to be true. There's something more reliable. That's the more sure, more, more trustworthy, more reliable, more anchored word of prophecy. What says, whereunto ye do well that ye take heed as unto a light that shineth in a dark place until the day dawn and the day star arise in your hearts. Mm -hmm. He says the word of God is more reliable than your experiences. Amen. Amen. And then he reaffirms it by saying this. Knowing this first. This is the first truth you got to understand about the Bible. Knowing this first. That no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. Amen. That's right. Now, what does that mean? We're going to talk about interpretation a little bit, and I don't know if we'll get to it tonight, but what does that mean? No private interpretation. I've heard some guys say, well, that means you don't have a right to go into the Bible and interpret it the way you did. No, but the Holy Spirit has a, has a, has a right to apply it the way He wants to. It may be out of context, but if the Holy Spirit applies it to your life, you know, that's okay, because the Holy Spirit led you and teaches you certain things. But that's not what it means. What it means is he is doubling down. He is basically reinforcing the fact that everything that was recorded before were not man's words, how they experienced it. What it was was, God said, Moses, write this down. Amen. And Moses wrote it down. That's why it says, thus saith the Lord. So you can take it that it is, is exactly God's words. Amen. Not man's words. Uh, Jeremiah did not write it down in his words. He, now here's the, here's the miraculous part. The miraculous part is God allowed them to use literary style while maintaining the divine words of God in it. Amen. 
That's why you can recognize Paul very consistent how he writes. Starts with a salutation, starts with a greeting, good, usually praises the church, gets into some problems, congratulates them, and, 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 and tells them that he's praying for them, and then he closes, hey, salute them, and when I see you next time. Very consistent in the way he wrote his letters. Peter, very consistent in, uh, in, in his books that he wrote, very, very similar styles. And, and so God allowed that, but that, that, that doesn't mean they interpreted it their own way. They wrote it down exactly as the Holy Spirit gave them utterance. Now watch this. Look at verse 22. For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man. But holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. So, Peter's laying out the importance of the Word of God, the importance of the written Word of God over the experiences that you may have as a Christian, as a, as a believer, or as people have as an unbeliever. But look at the next verse of the next chapter. Uh -oh. But, see now it connects. We have a division here in our reading, but, but it actually is a constant thought here. He says, but... There were false prophets also among the people. That means in the Old Testament, when he's talking about the prophecies of the Old Testament of the Scriptures, there were men and women who were assuming the position that they were God's prophet or prophetess, and they were proven to be wrong. And they were doing it, as we know, by the will of man. They were self-appointed preachers. They were self-appointed prophetesses. There were self-appointed people that were standing in the stead of what they were teaching people that they were of God, and, and, and they were lying to the people. Now, the only way that the people would follow those people, watch this, is if they were ignorant of God's Word. That's right. This week, you saw one of the most reprehensible things that a quote-unquote Christian could do regarding the election. <coughs> you say, well, we're on the edge of our seat, preacher. What are you talking about? <laughs> See, the president has a, has a woman that's a, a spiritual advisor to him. Her name is Paula White. And what she did this week was reprehensible. She claimed that she saw angels being sent from Africa to come and protect and deliver our president. She stood in that, uh, in that uh, pulpit. First of all, she wasn't supposed to be behind the pulpit. That's not the place. That's God's word, not man's word. That's not chauvinistic. You think it's chauvinistic, and you think God's chauvinistic. He has a place for everybody to serve in the church. A woman's not supposed to be a preacher or a pastor. So she's already wrong in that position. Right in the middle of her incantation, I really believe that's what she was doing. She just kept repeating the same thing over. I see an abundance of rain. I see the angels coming. I see, and over and over, right in the middle of it, she starts talking gibberish. Oh, she calls it speaking in tongues. Sure. But that's gibberish. That's, right. that's not even biblical. Oh, no. What they're doing isn't even speaking in tongues. That was reprehensible. And you know what you saw was people in the crowd standing on their feet praying, oh, yes, God, yeah, 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 yeah. That was false worship. Amen. She's a false teacher. Amen. She actually would call herself a false prophetess. Well, she would call herself the false one. She'd call herself a prophetess. But the Word of God exposes her as a false prophetess. Amen. That's right. In the Old Testament, she would be taken outside the city and stoned. That's right. Amen. We don't do that now. God will take care of that. Amen. So, but the Bible says, as there were false prophets also among the people. By the way, let me say this. There's a bunch, if you like the news like I do, uh, I watch, there's a lot of videos of, of guys on YouTube. I am so sick and tired of people saying, well, uh, God gave me a vision and President Trump's going to win the election. Mm -hmm. God hasn't given you that, that vision. That, they're lying. Mm -hmm. he, may win the, he may win the election. That's okay, whatever, whatever happens. That God didn't do that. And, and we're not going to have time tonight to go through it, but you come back in the next few weeks, I'll show it to you. It's not even possible for that to happen anymore. God does not operate that, in that way anymore. Uh, it doesn't happen anymore. So he says here, but as there were false prophets also among the people, watch this, 
even as there shall be, that's present tense now, there shall be false teachers among you who privily shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that bought them, and bring upon themselves swift destruction. And many, this is a sad statement right here. This is a sad verse. And many shall follow their pernicious ways. The word pernicious means destructive. By reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. Say, so why are you reading this, preacher? Because Satan in the garden, he knew he had to attack God's word if he was going to get man to fall. If he was going to hurt God, and you rest assured his intention was to steal glory and hurt God, he was being vengeful towards God. He said, I'm going to take his creation out. And he started messing with the Word of God. And what Peter says here, some thousands of years later, people are still going to be messing with the Word of God. Right. Because the devil is real. Amen. And the devil has a lot of people filling pulpits across the United States of America and across the world. And they look, look the part. They even got the catchphrases. They know what to say. They know how to do this, but, but they don't pass the smell test. Yes, right. They don't pass the measuring stick. Mm -hmm. And that's why we have to defend the words of God. Amen. You know, we studied a few, few weeks ago, a few months ago, of things that Paul in, told Timothy he was entrusted with. It was in 1 Timothy. And then he said, Now keep that which was committed to thy trust. And the first thing that was committed to his trust in 1 Timothy chapter 1 was doctrinal purity. Amen. Doctrinal purity. I'm telling you, there is a, 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 a bad thing that's going on with doctrinal purity right now. And COVID is the excuse. COVID is the excuse for everything. Yeah. Everything takes longer because COVID. Like you're working from home, you have the same computer. What, why is it taking you longer, right? Because you're, you're goofing off, right? No, I don't know. Yeah. But um, uh, that, that's a general statement. That's you take that, throw that out. But um, see, now I lost my, my train of thought. COVID, COVID stops everything, right? So um, uh, COVID, I'm watching fellow preachers of ours, just churches that we would affiliate with, that are severely stepping off some solid foundations that they have. And, and you see it in, in the battles. I've talked to some of them personally over the years uh, and seen the demise and COVID has done nothing but accelerate it. Well, we don't need to worry about that stuff anymore. I mean, we just need to worry about Jesus. Well, I agree with that statement. We need to worry about Jesus. But you know living right is concerned about Jesus? Thinking right is concerned about Jesus. What you do and where you go and all the things you about, those are thinking about Jesus. See, that's a very loose statement. And the Bible says in the last days that they're going to turn the grace of God into lasciviousness. That's, that's what's going to happen. They're, they're going to get such loose standards and looseness on everything that it's just going to be about, hey, we're just all come together. You know, we're just, let, let's put down our labels and let's just all, all worship together because we all worship the same God. I'm going to tell you right now, I don't worship the same God Paula White worships. That's right. Amen. The God she worships is not the God of this Bible. I promise you that. Amen. And we go down a whole list of all those guys that are on television. We go down a whole list of those who are, who are on the bookshelves and those type of things. And I'll tell you what, you, they don't pass the smell test. You show, most, show me most of those guys. You pick up their books and you tell me if they're using the King James Bible. Nope. You won't find it in there. You'll find either a multitude of different versions, but usually there's not even a King James Bible in there. And we're not going to go through it tonight because I just wanted to lay this out as some introductory stuff over the next few weeks. But, you know, you're going to come to the conclusion it's the King James Bible or it's nothing. That's right. That's what we have today. That's, right. That's what we have today. And, and we'll be able to show you that and show you, you know, there's historical proof. Uh, there, there's there's uh, 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 obviously prophetical proof that shows that the Bible even bears witness of itself. Then the King James Bible would be at the seventh, purified seven times, Psalm 26 and 7. Amen. It's the seventh one in the, in the, in, in the line of translations that, that we've come to. Amen. Praise the Lord. And so, why is this important? Because the Bible says, first of all, 
that is Satan's attack. If he can dumb us down according to the word, of, the word of God, we are defeated before we even go into battle. Our sword that we've been given to go out and do battle is dull. <laughs> and, and many times people are going out, they don't even have the sword of, sword of the Spirit. They don't even have the Word of God as it goes forth. And they're going out there and they're doing, uh, think they're doing battle for God and they're just getting slaughtered. Because they don't have the Word of God. So why are we studying the Word of God? Because it's Satan's what he's going after. That's why, listen, if you're going to be saved, you've got to believe the Word of God. Amen. That's why religious systems were developed. To stop you from seeing your need of Christ and seeing what he has made available for you. That it's by grace through faith. What religion does is muddies the water. Because religion doesn't depend upon the Word of God. You say, I thought it would depend. No, uh, many religions today have other books that they use. Jehovah's Witnesses have the Watchtower publications that they use. And they hold the same authority as God's Word. Which, by the way, they used the King James Bible up to 1954. You say, what changed? Well, their founder came out with his own Bible. Imagine that. So they changed the Bible. And they have all these publications. Of course, you have the Mormons who hold the pearl of uh, great price in the Book of Mormon at the same authority and even above it than the Word of God. You have the Catholic Church that believes the papal encyclicals are at the same authority and above the authority of the Word of God. And what that does, it blinds people. Shouldn't surprise us that Satan goes after the Word of God. It shouldn't surprise us that our lineage, our, our people don't get to write the history books. Because our people end up in the guillotines and in the prisons and on the racks and in the squads and in the in the chambers. You know why? Because our people stand for the Word of God. And the, the world hates the Word of God. Jesus said the world hates him. And if it hates him, it's going to hate us. Listen, I, I don't know if you know this or not, but but and, and, and unless, there, there's real trouble coming. I don't tell you that to a fear monger. I'm not a fear monger. I'm telling you that so you can de deal with reality and understand that, that there are some, some real thoughts and some real threats about people uh, like us who are Bible-believing Christians. You say, what do we do, preacher? You just keep living the book, man. Just keep believing it. Keep living it. Keep learning about it. Keep growing in it. Keep sharing it. Keep memorizing it. Make it the center, the preeminence of your life. Remember, Christ is to be the preeminence, the center of everything that we do. But we've got to get into his word. We've got to understand his word. We've got to know his word. Why? Because that's what Satan's going after. Mm -hmm. So it's a defense for us. David said, I will hide thy word in my heart that I might not sin against thee. See, there's a benefit to knowing the word of God. God will clean your life up. If you just know the Word of God. Oh, it's easy to say, we all do it. Well, I know the Bible says this. I'm going to paraphrase. I'm going to... And we get the understanding of it. And I, I believe, uh, at least most people that do it here, they're not trying to be malicious towards the Scripture. They're just trying to, 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 to teach about the Scriptures. But the reality is, we do grave danger to people's faith when we start changing the Word of God. If I ever get up here and start saying, well, I know the Bible says this, but it would be better rendered this way, it's time for me to go. Because we don't mess with it. Amen. Amen. And so Bruce, Bruce, Brother Bruce, who's with the Lord now, invested his whole life in that. He invested his whole life, wrote materials on it, little booklets on it. Uh, why? Because it's the essential. He understood that this was what it was. It's the authority of God's Word that the sinner hates. Right. So we got to know about it. So hang on to your handout for next week. We'll, we'll get into it next week uh, and start going through these. But I just wanted to lay a foundation for you tonight as to why we need to be people of the book. Mm -hmm. There'll come a time, it's already happening, it was happening in Portland, Oregon, that they were already burning this book. Mm -hmm. This year, they took the book, the books of the Word of God, and they were burning them on the streets of America. 
We don't need to fear. Amen. We need to anchor ourselves in this book. You know, it's a worthy position to suffer for the cause of Christ. Our forefathers would go to the stake with flames being uh, uh, raising up, either singing songs, hymns, or quoting scripture. Because they knew that that's what was going to get them through and what they needed to, to have their foundation on. Listen, faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. If you think you're saved because you're religious, you're going to find out sadly that you're wrong. You've got to put your faith and trust in the Word of God. Amen. And His name is Jesus. Amen. The Bible says when He comes back, on the side of His leg is written a name, the Word of God. Amen. That's Jesus. And the Word was made <laughs> flesh and dwelt among us. We beheld His glory as the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Amen. So if you're here tonight without Christ, you can be saved tonight. You just got to put your faith in God's Word. Not in your experience and not in your religion. You can be saved tonight. But Christians, we ought to be in this Word. We ought to be in it daily. It shouldn't be a single day that goes by that we're not in this Word. Amen? Amen. 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 That's probably that's for a word of prayer. Father, I thank you so much for this day. Be together. And the Lord, while our penis gets ready, I want to stop and just ask a question real quick. But heads bowed, eyes closed. I wonder if there's anybody here tonight that says, Preacher, I don't, I don't know for sure that if I die tonight, I'm going to be with God in heaven, but I'm concerned about it. Would you pray for me? So anybody would slip their hand up and say, Pray for me, Preacher. That's me. I don't know that I'm saved, but I sure would like to know I'd be saved tonight. Anybody like that at all? Well, Father, again, we thank you so much for what we've learned tonight and been reminded of. It's just a very basic truth, but... Lord, our flesh does not want to read this book. Our flesh does not want to spend time with this book. There are so many other distractions, Lord, that uh, one, that that we are pulled away with, uh, oftentimes. Uh, and Lord, we've got to we've got to in our heart hunger and thirst after this book, after righteousness, Lord. So I pray tonight as we leave this place, uh, Lord, seeing that no hands went up for salvation, assuming that we're all uh, children of God here tonight. Lord, I pray that you would. Uh, put deeply embedded within us a greater desire to spend time in your word, to read it, to th think about it, to meditate upon it, to share it with others, to study it, Lord, to make it the center of our lives. We understand we still have to live our lives, Lord, that you've given, but Lord, it can be the center and the central control of our lives. And Lord, I believe that's what you would have for every one of us here tonight. So we thank you for what we've learned. We're excited about the study we're going to do over the next few weeks, Lord. Um, and I pray that you'll bless and continue to grow this crowd on Wednesday night as we study about your word, Lord. There's no greater topic to study about right now than this. And so, Lord, I pray you'll help us to do that. Thank you, Lord. Get us home safely tonight. And we uh, just thank you and ask your blessing now as we're dismissed. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. All right, God bless you. You are dismissed. far and wide.